And tonight on Joy News Prime, some Ghanaians are happy with the implementation of the electronic transaction levy switch to cash transactions. Compare charges now. Any TNT, any commercial scanner, shall I will be... How packaging the envelope? Put it uh, the half pieces of cloth. I'll say that I'm selling the pieces of cloth. Also, local assemblies grind to a halt due to protracted industrial action of members of the Civil and Local Government Staff Association, Ghana. I just imagine for just these two weeks, virtually everything has come to a halt. We are doing our best, but without them, you can never you, uh, achieve whatever you are supposed to, want to achieve as an assembly. And the Mobile Money Agents Association of Ghana is raising concerns about wrongful electronic levy charges, contrary to the guidelines of the Ghana Revenue Authority. We have also conducted series of investigation with regards to agents to bank transfers. Most of those transfers need not to attract any fee, but some of the banks, I will not want to mention their name now, are still doing the same by charging most of the agents. And that has been a very bad thing on the part of the bank. And at 8, I'll be handing it over to Charles and Gary for Prime Business and Prime Sports. Charles, what's coming up in business? Well, tonight, government gas flowing policy is up for review as it embarks on an emergency consultation with all exploration and production companies. The necessary training in IT infrastructure to enable internal auditors add value in the digitalized environment. And in sports, Athletics Kenya president tells Joy Sports that the country has what it takes to host the World Athletics Championships in 2025. We have come a long way and, and, and this is the time that we believe that um, we have built enough capacity, that we are ready and we can host, or we can, um, uh, host the World Championships in 2025. And later as well, Wesley Gels in Fansipim School and Holy Child kicked out of the search for the best science and math quiz school in the central region. This one was just, it was not a contest. We are waiting for a test ah, And wait, yes, you can Also, well, this and many more are coming up shortly. This hour, this is your home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. I am Blessed Sogan. Stay for details. Joy News Prime Headlines. Well, so tonight a section of Ghanaians are unhappy with the implementation of the electronic transactions levy are using unconventional means to remit money. Some have switched to traditional cash in pocket and uh, purse for transactions. More money vendors who are the worst hit believe the drop in transactions can be attributed to low public education on the e-levy operation. There's more in this report. 29-year-old Osman Idrisu is here at a mobile money shop at Top High in Kumasi. He claims this is his last electronic withdrawal for the year. Before the introduction of the e-levy, Osman Idrisu sent money electronically to relatives in Accra. But he is making attempts to avoid e-levy charges on his transactions. So next time he said, we money will be here. No compare charges, no. Any TNT, any commercial scanner, she had the monanka. The the aqua kuma ni pakro. Aha. I tie the money in a piece of cloth and take it to the VIP station. Say be am person send this camo. Be the matter is say meet me allow cash out. Then you panic in a merchant or na. You pano eh. To be be am will be am allow cash out no. Na you pano eh scan. Osman is aware the safety of his cash may not be assured till it reaches the recipient. It is a risky venture, yet he is never perturbed. If I say from Kumasi to Accra, depending on the city, STC and VIP and even for a normal sprinter, no, I'm not checking out the corona value, no. And I will not force into into my into my going to my good be you can equally tie and hide it in a bag of clothes. one of the pockets. Uncle Gilbert is in the same boat as Osman. For days now, he has switched to using cash in all his transactions. Uncle Gilbert wraps his money in a piece of cloth to send to his mother in the Volta region. If I will send money to my parents, 
some of my relatives, Aflau, for example, I put it inside the cloth. I will not send a, a what they call it, mobile money anymore. Yeah, I will package in the envelope, put it uh, the half pieces of cloth. I'll say that I'm selling the pieces of cloth. And then I'll call them that them, there is money inside there, they will change it. The refusal to undertake e-transaction stems from the fear that revenue generated from the electronic transaction levy may not be used judiciously. What if the revenue generated is not used for development? If we are unemployed, why should we be taxed? But others see no harm in payment. What I have to do, like, I just have to accept it like that. And I do like 100 cities and now I'm betting, you know. I'm betting, you know. I'm betting, you the e levy is a good move. Financial experts predict a further decline in electronic money transactions. Mobile money vendor Samuel Pra says the panic withdrawals have adversely impacted his business. During the previous days, people were withdrawing more. People were, in fact, were drawing, withdrawing more. I, I plan to even quit to quit doing more money to win back his customers samuel takes his time to explain the processes and deductions on transactions this is yielding positive results because of the explanation i gave to them people are initially people fear to even keep money on their phone but now as i explain things to them me only me as an individual i've been able, able to convince and explain things to them and now they have understand. The Ashanti area director of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Mrs. Agnes Akosua Edubwatin, wants intensified public education of the implementation of the e levy to halt the panic withdrawals. It is important to know that the following under the e levy, more, more activities will not attract the electronic levy deposit. If you deposit, we'll take you through briefly. If you withdraw and then you cash out, then savings on Momo wallet, all of this are not subject to the e levy. We believe with continuous engagement with all of you, will help restore confidence on the usage of our platforms to facilitate all your financial transaction. Mona Lisa Frimpon reporting. Well, let's stay on this a bit because the Mobile Money Association of Ghana is raising concerns about wrongful electronic levy charges contrary to guidelines of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Ahead of the implementation of the e-levy, GRA indicated that bank to mobile money wallet services will be exempt from e-levy charges. However, just five days into the rollout of the levy, mobile money merchants say they will be forced to name and shame banks if the Revenue Authority fails to address their concerns of wrongful deductions at a scheduled meeting tomorrow. Charles Quisiado, a spokesperson for the group. Definitely, yes. Um, interestingly, we have had a call from the Ghana Revenue Authority. We'll be in a meeting with them tomorrow, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. So most of such issues will be addressed by them. And without even saying that, we have also conducted series of investigation with regards to agents to bank transfers. Most of those transfers need not to attract any fee. But some of the banks, I will not want to mention their name now, are still doing the same by charging most of the agents. And that has been a very bad thing on the part of the banks. So we are going to report to the Ghana Revenue Authority so that those banks will be brought to book. If not, if nothing is done about it, we'll make sure that the names of such banks are revealed to the general public. And most of the agents will just withdraw their services to start back. So, so you are accusing some of the banks of, of abusing or violating the, the law. Precisely, you're not supposed to be charged on the bank to Momo transfers at once it's established that that account belongs to you, but you're pointing out otherwise. Exactly. Most of them, and we are believing, the reports we are having is that it's a technical challenge mm. by some of the banks. They've not done 
they are worked properly. And therefore, they are waiting on Ghana Revenue Authority. So we are giving them up to Friday. If they are unable to come clear and then make it clear to the general public or specifically the agent, then we are going to mention their names out. And most of the customers will just withdraw their services with some banks. Meanwhile, the group says its members are unhappy about the rollout of the e-levy. <laughs> Our point is still clear out there. Agents are not happy, and that has to state emphatically. In, in, in fact, most of the transactional volumes have to reduce drastically. And interestingly enough, there's no balance in our business now. Initially, if you take 10 people, let's say 10 people visit your stand in a day, at least 40 or four, four, or four of them will have withdrawal or 60, or let me say in terms of percentage, 60, 40. That 60 is for withdrawal or 40 for transfer. But the, the opposite is rather happening. Now, we are at the page of 60%. Any person that comes to our shop is into a job. And the rest of them are doing their possible. But let me put this thing across. You know, there are falsehoods out there that whenever your money is set to be in your account, whether you are in there to withdraw or you leave the money there, automatically you'll be debited by your account, illegally. So that falsehood is also challenging people out there to troop in in their numbers to have withdrawal with us. And I want to use this great medium to say it is never true. Well, let's focus on some of the issues. Nearly all local assemblies across the country are grinding to a halt as there is no end in sight to the protracted industrial action of the members of the Civil and Local Government Staff Association, Ghana, Clocksack. Clocksack says it will only return to work if government pays the controversial neutrality allowance. Checks by Joy News revealed that the industrial action is beginning to bite hard as the leadership uh, of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly are expressing worry that almost all office, offices and also departments have been deserted. Michael Ashley has the rest of the story. It's been exactly two weeks since members of Clocksack embarked on their nationwide sit-down strike after government failed to pay their neutrality allowance among other allowances. But the question is what is the impact on the nation, on the ordinary Ghanaian that seeks services from some government institutions like that of the Registrar General's department. Innocent individuals that come to this department, for instance, have been turned away because the members here, part of Clocksack as well, have been part of the strike. Uh, we run a foundation, I and my friends, we started in the university, so we are supposed to submit our annual returns every year, and that's what I came to do. When I came last time, they said they had changed the process and we had to submit another form. So I went back and I think that was a month ago. And now I came to submit that form together with the annual returns and they said they are not working. My major issue with that is that they could have just sent us a message earlier on so that we don't have to waste the time coming here. At the AMA, the strike bites even harder with the works of the various assemblymen and women hanging. According to the presiding member of the AMA, Alfred J, key positions held by members of the striking group have been deserted, making it nearly impossible to do any meaningful work. This has been a, a very devastating uh, to the assembly. Closac members are integral part of the assembly. They work at the human resource department, at the finance department, at the works department. All these 16 departments is headed by uh, 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 um, a director. The directors are part of the closer. And the structures at the assembly. We have the, uh, the subcommittees at the assembly. These subcommittees is chaired by the assembly members. But the secretaries to the subcommittees are the closer members. Okay, they are the uh, secretary that take record, that take minutes of everything. From there, for just these two weeks, virtually everything has come to a halt. We are doing our best, but without them, you can never you, uh, achieve whatever you are supposed to want to achieve as an assembly. In other not to risk a complete shutdown, Alfred Ajay wants the leadership of Clocksag and government to conclude negotiations as soon as possible. As for the effect, it has really affected us greatly. So that's why we are pleading with the Closac members, at the same time too, we are also uh, talking to the, like, the, the government should also um, prioritize this as soon as possible for them to sit down with them, jaw jaw. Let me thank you very much. So that's the presiding member for the Accra Metropolitan Assembly.
and essentially ending with a plea to government and clock side who are the feuding sides at the moment to find some middle ground so all this can end so the impact that they face can end very soon for joy news michael ashali from the accra metropolitan assembly well, let's stay on this. Joining us on the phone now is uh, Obeng Chum Nicholas, PRO for the Registrar General's Department. Thank you for your time here on Join News Prime. So, uh, what arrangements have you put in place now that we're learning clearly that the clock sack strike uh, is actually impacting negatively on your activities? Uh, thank you very much, Senior, for having me. Um, we are urging our, our clients and especially stakeholders to visit our online portals to transact and renew their businesses. Because the strike has been very devastating, as your colleague said, and we are trying to mitigate the impact. So we are urging our clients to visit and use our portal in order to assess the, the, the services we offer manually. Uh, for now, are there some services uh, that you're not rendering? Because, for instance, we are getting reports that uh, marriages are not being registered, for instance, at your department. Yes, it's true. And you see, that our department is a member of the CLOSA. A chunk of the workforce are members of the CLOSA. And therefore, as a, such a case happens, it really affects our work. As it stands now, and correctly said, marriages have been halted, our business registration has been halted, and any other uh, thing we do, services we provide as a department, have all been halted. And it can have an impact on us, not only us, the individuals, the business communities, and the economy as a whole. And we are, we are not enthused about this at all. So we are urging government and our leadership to just meet and settle the matter so that uh, uh, we can work and go on and the economy can improve. I was asking about interim measures as to whether or not you have arrangements for uh, perhaps those who are getting married and some other persons who may need crucial or essential services from your department. Yes, as it stands now, we, we, we are not doing any manual services. We are not doing any manual services, whether it's in business registration, whether it's in marriage celebration. We are not doing any manual services. But however, we are urging our clients to use our portal because our portal is a 24-hour service portal, which they can go there and uh, the services they want to uh, get, they can be, they can be done there. Are you not worried that there could be severe impacts on the economy as well? We are worried, my brother. We are very much worried. We, as a department and as a, especially serving the business community, and as the saying goes, time is money. We've spent almost two weeks at home on this strike. And that is why we are pleading to government leadership, our leadership, to sit in Georgia and have an amicable solution to all this. Because we are losing as a department, we are losing revenue. It's affecting the business communities. It's affecting individual marriages. It's affecting a lot and it's having a devastating impact on uh, our, our cherished clients who we, we, we serve. And, and that is our worry now. That is why we are saying that. Um, at least to mitigate the impact, they should use our online portal so that mm. at the end of the day we can serve them. If not whole, we can at least meet them and, uh, at the uh, middle ground and, and provide services for them. Uh, how setting are we about the efficiency of the online platform? You seem to be talking about that a lot, but there are some of your clients who complain about some of the challenges they face online. Have you rectified all of these challenges? Um, as you are urging people to go online? Yes, we, we've rectified that. And in, in recently, we introduced a short code, uh, start to, to, to hash for individual businesses. That is what we usually refer to as the sole proprietorship, where they can dial it on their phone and get their businesses renewed. However, our online is, uh, is, is working. It's working and it, we are assuring the business community to visit it. I mean, yes, we had some challenges. But it has been resolved by our IT team and, and it's work up and working. And with the exception of filing of annual returns, everything can be done online. Nicholas, we wait to see what then happens in the coming days. I'm grateful. Now, press freedom has slumped in Ghana, but it may not solely be the fault of government. This is contained in the state's official response to the latest press freedom index. We downgraded Ghana by some 30 points on the league table for 180 countries. After a series of reactions to the latest index, the Ministry of Information says it welcomes the findings 
within the report. And uh, it, there you have excerpts of the report indicating that uh, it is important to emphasize that the uh, change in the methodology significantly accounted for the drop in the ranking for a number of countries, including Netherlands, uh, which dropped from the fifth position in 2021 to the 28th position uh, in this latest ranking. Uh, and due to this development, four countries as well, uh, we have Jamaica, Switzerland, and New Zealand, adding on to uh, Netherlands as well, that uh, were ranked top 10 in 2021, significantly dropping in their rankings as well from the top 10 under the year in review. Then uh, the official uh, response continues to indicate that it is worthy of uh, note that Ghana's dip in ranking was largely influenced by two of the new parameters, namely the economic context and safety of journalists where the country scored 47.22% and 62.25 percent respectively the country comparatively uh, compared uh, co actually performed better in guaranteeing safety of journalists with 62.25 percent just opposed to the economic factors that influence media work which is 47.22 percent underpinned by poor salaries for journalists and lack of financial st uh, sustainability of some media houses making uh, obviously them uh, making them uh, economically less viable uh, the response from the Ministry of Information continues to say that on the safety of journalists it is imperative to note that an activity that may feed into the assessment of press freedom includes actions by non state actors well, so we know that there's also uh, a response uh, on this. The Information Ministry has been speaking to this. The Deputy Minister, Fatih Abouaka, has also been speaking on this, indicating that government will do all it can to resolve the challenges. And representative from the Canadian High Commission, members of the National Media Commission, distinguished senior journalists, media practitioners present, all protocol duly observed. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I bring you the compliments of the Honorable Minister for Information and my boss, Honorable Kojo Opon Kroma, who would have loved to be here, but we had a, an equally important press briefing at the ministry, which caused us to split. So I'm here wearing his big shoes and to deliver a speech on the occasion of World Press Freedom Day 2022 on his behalf. The work of journalists, as important as it is, gives voice to the voiceless, exposes injustice, and holds leaders accountable in all spheres. Our world today is experiencing a rapid development with the influx of new media. With fewer barriers to entry, lower distribution costs, and diverse computer networking technologies, the widespread practice of digital journalism cannot be overemphasized. This has led to information spreading faster and more people reporting on issues on a whim. Mr. Chairman, as journalism in this digital age is practiced with a greater degree of creativity as compared to traditional journalism and traditional media. It comes with its own challenges. Misinformation and disinformation have become widespread with many actors spawning false narratives and inaccuracies. The Ministry of Information launched a short campaign technocrats and industry experts to facilitate the passage of the Broadcasting Bill, which will regulate the content space and potentially reduce the attacks that endanger journalists and journalism. This is being done with tax so as not to create a situation where it becomes a tool for successive governments to use in stifling media freedom and freedom of expression. Freedom of expression and media freedoms are fundamental human rights guaranteed under the 1992 Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, and which right, even though 
can be affected by laws must be done carefully in a manner that we don't create a ruse used as an opportunity to stifle those freedoms. Well, joining me now is Gehat Mensa, a veteran journalist, sharing his opinion with us uh, on the response by government on this. Gehat, thank you for your time here on Join News Prime. So, government says the way forward is to collaborate the more with the Ghana Journalists Association and other civil society groupings in the country. Uh, what's your take on the way forward as well? Do you feel that's a sustainable way of dealing with the challenges identified in the Press Freedom Report? Okay, you would have to unmute for me so I can hear you uh, loud and clear. Thank you very much and thanks for this opportunity. I think collaboration with the media is extremely important. It's not for nothing that the media is referred to as the fourth estate of the realm. And so in order to bring democracy alive, in order to ensure that together media, government, work towards meeting the aspirations of Ghanaians, that working together is extremely important going forward. But I think we are at a junction that requires reflection. We are at a junction that does not need unnecessary defenses. I think we need to do a sober reflection and to get to understand the reason why we are here today. And by that, I'm referring to the reasons why we have had this kind of ranking, which to some of us is not so much of a surprise. If instead of a sober reflection to understand why we are here, we engage in all kinds of defenses, I think that we will be playing the ostrich because I, I am very clear in my mind that the verdict is out there and we just need to acknowledge it and work towards rewriting this particular script. Uh, and there's this concern also about false or fake news as um, the response from government is pointing out. How do we deal with that as well? Um, false, fake news, um, they both have been with us for quite a while now. Um, even before the advent of social media, there was false news. There is also fake news. There is already a procedure in this country for dealing with false and fake news. If there is a publication about an institution or an individual which is deemed to be false or fake, there is a reason why we have the media commission. There is a reason why we have the right to rejoin that. These are outlying processes that civilized society resort to in order to ensure that whatever transgressions have been conducted or undertaken by the journalist is righted. Mm. The response to false and fake news is not in the police, arrogating to themselves the authority to determine what is false publication and going after such journalists. That is part of the reason why we are here today. I don't know of any democracy where the police by themselves and by refusing to even acknowledge or publicize who a complainant is, by themselves go after journalists because the police thinks that the journalist has published false news. Okay then, Doesn't because we don't have all of the time. Any. Yeah. Because we don't have all of the time, let, let's deal with the uh, last segment of the report which talks about the economic context. Uh, the fact that most journalists across the country don't have good conditions uh, under which they are working. How do we address this as well? Um, let's not obfus um, obfuscate the issue. Let's not bring through in tangents that will try to color where we are today. I'm very clear in my mind that the issue of the economy was one of the parameters that the Reporters Without Borders used this time around as part of their methodology. But hey, economy or not, bad or good, it does not take away the fact that in recent times there, there, there has been a lot more frequency in terms of the attacks that journalists have been subjected to. The attacks had nothing to do with the economy of the journalist, it had nothing to do with the economy of this country. It has everything to do with the temperament 
for accommodating free expression. And I think that is the issue that we need to focus on. We need to leave it here. Um, Gayhat Mensah, I'm grateful that you've been able to talk to us tonight on Joy News Prime. Still to come here on Joy News Prime, Wesley Girls in Fancy Supreme School and Holy Child kicked out of the search for the best science and math quiz school in the central region. Well, don't forget as well that we are asking the question on social media, finding out from you um, what the effect of the mobile money charges in terms of e-levy has been on your personal economy. That and more is coming up right here on Joy News Prime. Now, students of Busunji Girls Senior High School will be giving a tablet each for, to facilitate teaching and learning of science, technology and mathematics. The school, uh, one of the STEM schools constructed and the government's 21st century school project, will also have labs stocked with the needed modern equipment. Education Minister Dr. Ose Yao Aduchum, who made the announcement, says the provision of modern facilities in the school is through a systemic government plan to improve STEM education. Ohim Interior has more in the following report. The 21st Century Molder Senior High School's project was introduced as part of government's educational reforms. The reforms include the provision of modern educational infrastructure, such as laboratories, to aid in the teaching of science, technology, and mathematics. One of such schools is the Bosomche Girls Senior High School, located at Dediako in the Bosomche district of the Ashanti region. The yet-to-be-commissioned school is expected to admit 300 girls. 72 students are currently on campus. Education Minister Dr. Oseyao Educhum told students the government will provide them with all the necessary facilities to aid in their studies. So uh, within about one or two weeks, all your science lab will have everything that you need to use to do your science lab activities. In some schools, you have to go to the third year before you can go to the lab. Here you are starting from first year. Then all the classrooms are also going to get smart boards. So everything is going to be 21st century. Dr. Edushim was speaking at a ceremony in the school where Huawei Ghana presented 20 laptops and a projector to the school. Director of Public Affairs at Huawei Ghana, Janice Zhu, reiterated the technology company's commitment through partnership and corporate social responsibility to support government's quest to reform the education sector in Ghana. Huawei remains committed to the development of all aspects of education in Ghana. And our presence here today is to affirm this commitment through our key donation of Huawei ICT device and equipment to facilitate the teaching and the learning process of Bosomchi Girls Senior High School. From Kumasi, for Joy News, I'm Interia reporting. Now, the Ghana National Fire Service has appealed for the support of the district and municipal assemblies in the Volta region to enhance firefighting in the Volta region. The Volta Regional Fire Commander Assistant Fire Officer 1 Joy Amayboy Yim entrenched the, as, entreated the assemblies to establish bush fire control sub committees and increase the number of fire stations and fire posts, among others. He was speaking at a ceremony to commemorate the International Firefighters Day in Ho. The small in the following report. In commemoration of this year's International Firefighters Day, some officers stationed in the Volta region converged at the regional command to honor and mourn officers who had fallen in the line of duty to save life and property. The occasion was also used to create awareness of the sacrifices of firefighters and the need to prevent fire outbreaks. The Volta Regional Fire Commander, Assistant Fire Officer 1, Joy Ameibo Ayim, outlined some measures to be undertaken to improve firefighting. The theme for the celebration is valuing the collective sacrifices of firefighters. 
the theme brings to mind sacrifices firefighters make in saving lives and property. In the awareness creation, we urge the municipal and district assemblies to establish bushfire control subcommittees in the assemblies in accordance with BNDC Law 229, which is, uh, touches on control and prevention of bushfires. The act was promulgated in 1990. We also want the assemblies to support the training of fire volunteers and then fire education programs that are done in their districts so that we can reach the nooks and crannies of this region. We also urge them to try to establish more fire stations and then fire posts. This will enhance the proximity of our services to the community. In conclusion, I want to call upon the public to support the service with logistics such as pickups, motorbikes, bicycles, since government alone cannot do it, so that we can get to every nook and cranny of the region. The Volta Regional Minister, Dr. Achibod Lecha, who graced the occasion, lauded the commitment of firefighters in the region. Um, whatever we do is service to God. So it doesn't really matter about what people say, about the criticisms that we receive from people. But let us make sure that we do our work according to our protocols. We will be criticized. But let's accept the criticism in good faith and let us just as always examine ourselves to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Uh, your role during, even during road traffic accident is something we appreciate. But for your, the, your part, many people would have, would have perished in the, on, on our roads. And together with the Ghana Ambulance Service, we know that you're doing a lot of collaboration and work together. D01. Henry Gogovi, who is the most senior officer in the Volta region, was honored for his selfless service to firefighting. Reads were laid for officers who lost their lives in the line of duty. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, who... Well, so tonight on Joy News Prime, we are asking that question, has your use of mobile money changed ever since the rollout of the electronic transactions levy? Many of you uh, have been sharing your comments on social media. Uh, here you have it right on your screens. And we'll go through some of the um, remarks and comments that have been coming through. This one says that for me to send uh, uh, e-levy uh, to be deducted, I choose to withdraw and send. I don't care the cost but I just don't want to pay the e-levy for someone else's father to use to fly a private jet. That's it. one of the comments coming through from Wellington Diamond. Uh, then there's also this one coming through from GH Mouse. He says that I want to send 2,000 cities to my account, but I didn't do that. I can't pay 40 cities. Meanwhile, I only need 23 cities uh, for both transports and charges when I go to withdraw uh, and deposit. There's also one from Powerman. He says that e-levy only affects transfer from wallet, so better send from Momo agents and dodge the e-levy now. He's trying to teach us how to evade tax. Well, there's also one uh, coming through from Wisdom, um, Apusiga Wisdom. Apusiga says that this morning we spent 30 minutes trying to dodge the e-levy. Finally, we succeeded. And then there's also one from Manase Nyasem. He says that Yes, it does significantly, and I have also adopted a way of receiving the money. The sender asked me to go uh, to the agent and then uh, allow cash out, and the agent will initiate withdrawal. Then I take the money. I do this if I'm receiving, but if I am sending, uh, I would have to pay uh, a little amount. So that's uh, anything about 400 uh, is my plan B. So let's take the final one coming through from... Prince Idrisu, he says that uh, I've even emptied my wallet before the implementation date. However, I still keep my merchant wallet account active through, uh, though I'm yet to transact business with it since the implementation of the obnoxious levy, as he's describing there. Well, we'll keep uh, bringing you more reactions, but for now, three NSMQ big names have been kicked out of the search for the APSA Science and March Squares champions in the central region. The dream of becoming the 2022 regional title holders has ended for Fancy Pim School, Wesley Girls School, and also 
Holy Child in Fancy Film School was eliminated by the Ghana National College in the first contest. Wesley Girls Senior High School and Holy Child School were left trailing in the second contest as university practice SHS bit them with more than 20 points to make it to the grand finale. Maxwell Agbagba has the rest of the story from Cape Coast. This is it. University Practice Senior High School has qualified for the grand finale of the National Science and Maths Quiz Central Regional Championship. Guess what? They beat former champions Wesley Girls High School. They also beat Holy Child School and Assistant College to qualify for the grand finale. It is uncontrollable joy here for this young man. Very, very excited. I'm very, very excited and I know we are going to qualify for the final and we are expecting much more from UPS. What was it like beating Wesley Girls and Holy Child? Hey, the game was very, very fantastic and enthusiastic. We had people investing for second base to the I swear to get to us. Okay. You be the best in the world. You be the best in the world. You are an old student. What should we have to You are an old student. What should we have to Oh, I understand. You should have spread the very best from us. You see, this one was just, it was not a contest. We are waiting for a dog boat. And wait, you see us. Now, even as the National Science and Maths Quiz kicks start at the regional levels, it is realized that there are uh, still some yawning gaps between theory and practice as some schools do not have the necessary equipment in their science labs for practical works. We bring to you uh, the case of KJP Asato Senior High School where science is studied with minimal practical work due to the unavailability of apparatus for practice. Peter Senu has the rest of the story. So next year, hopefully, you'll be writing your YC and also preparing towards YC. How difficult is it going to be for you now that you don't have adequate tools to study? Yes, it's difficult because sometimes when we are about to do the practical, because of the inadequate apparatus or equipment, we come as a group. But for the chemistry, we need to do individual so that we can feel the team. But because of the inadequate apparatus, we come as a group to do it. The science lab, which was stuck between the years 2000 and 2001, has not seen any major refurbishment since. Just like the tomb, beautiful outside, horrible within. Broken slabs, pipes and benches are the initial physical evidence when you step into the labs. The students and teachers would have to make the best out of the situation. David is the chemistry teacher at the school. Our lab is not the standard one. Uh -huh. So we are praying that in future uh, things will improve. Yeah, there are so many things we lack, we lack in this lab. The situation is no different at the physics and biology laboratories. Though the biology teacher indicated he has enough apparatus for practical work, he has to improvise for a practical session using his rice cooker as a water bath. Anytime we want to do a um, test for any food substance, we need the water bath, like I already said. So in place of the water bath, we are using the rice cooker. Dip the rack inside, and then what I do is that we put the test tubes inside so that it can be properly held together in place. Ebenezer Mileba is the head of the science and maths department in the school. Actually, we were given a lot of materials in all the labs, physics, chemistry, and biology. But the materials are there, but the, the structures are not well in order. They are not in order to fix the materials in the lab. So the, the lab is in a dilapidated state. So we need a lot of uh, changes. If, if you can do that before you can fix the materials, I think that would be better. The situation of lack 
the prefects of the school argue is affecting the academic work as candidates and preparations for the national science and math quiz. Some of the equipment or the apparatus are not in excess and this, this really makes it difficult for some students to cope because if they are asked to do an experiment in a group, some are not able to do it to their satisfaction. Lack of these equipment and instruments in the laboratory is one of the key factors which is leading to our failure in the science and math quiz. Sefas Adamvo is the assistant headmaster in charge of academic work in the school and he has this to say. Kasek is uh, very strong when it comes to the sciences. Year in, year out, we qualify for the uh, championship, we get to Accra, but because uh, we don't have the best of uh, uh, facilities in, in the lab. We get somewhere before the quarterfinals, we are eliminated when we meet the big, big, very, very big schools. And um, this has also affected us in a way because we start the training of our students when they come to the first year. But it appears the lab, the lab, the lab, the, we, we don't have the, those, those things to, you know, to, to really train our students with. Peter Senu for Joy News. And you're watching Joy News Prime. When we return, we'll bring you some updates in the world of entertainment. Well, so it's time now to check out what's happening in the world of entertainment. Guess what? IB is here with the great news. Yes, and it is Stoneboy that has been signed right. on to Universal Music Record Label. And today he was unveiled here in Accra, the Kempinski Gold Coast Hotel. And he was so elated. And he says that now he believes that he can hit all the heights that he has ever dreamt of. You look around, looking at what you've been through as an artist, from where you started, your works, industry people, everything till today. What is that thing that you feel? What is that thing that you would tell yourself that you have done? Thank you very much, Doreen. And um, that's very deep. That's very deep. Um, summing everything up, I, like I said over there, I was, I was forced to, you know, acknowledge yourself. Sometimes you have to pat yourself on the back and take a deep breath and look, continue to look forward. I mean by saying that appreciating yourself and thanking God for how far he has used you, you know, how far he has brought you, you know. It's not been easy. I've been here for more than 10 years and it always only feels refreshing. So that tells you it's not easy. It's always involving. It's always... And this is even just the beginning of that audience that we would we would we 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 have always been praying for. So that tells you that there's more work. There's absolutely you, times three of whatever you've been doing is what I have to do now because guess what? The audience has increased, the eyes that are watching has increased, so it's not gonna be a swift journey for somebody for me. Maybe others will think that, oh, okay, now nah, this is it. So the potential is definite that we can now hit the highest levels that we have always dreamt of by the grace of God. So I'm happy, I'm grateful to God for opening this door as well. And we're going to go through it successfully for the next door to open. That was Stoneboy with my colleague during Avio this morning at the Kempinski Gold Coast Hotel. But Adam, rapper Adam, who was also in the studios of Hits 103.9 on the morning show with Andy Dusty, also says something that corroborates what uh, ha happened to Stoneboy. And he says that for you to have an international breakthrough, you need funding, good marketing, and strategic PR. Yeah. If they want to make it on the international scene, you should have good funding and should also be aligned with the strategic labels. And then you can use anything to be able to go global. You don't, you don't really need English. You need funding and strategic PR and, 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 and the right companies. Because Burner Boy has songs that are in his language and they are still big because it's with Warner Music. And Warner Music comes with a big budget. You know, Ojo Elegba is a big record from, from Wizkid. It's a combination of his language and English. And so Ghanaians can do the same. You just need funding and, and the right companies. And let's not kid ourselves. These Nigerians are on proper record labels. Warner Music is not a joke. RCA, which uh, Whiskey is on, is the same label that Usher is on. So we are talking <laughs> global levels. And so I don't think it's language per se. I what think will take Adam to get there? 
funding, a lot of funding and a lot of uh, strategy. Uh, you know, funding is, is key for the for the Ghanaian artists because the biggest part of the music is marketing, and and Ghanaians are super talented. Let's let's not get it twisted. Ghanaians can do anything any creative is doing anywhere in the world, you know. But it's funding, and 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 the right uh, uh, strategy and the right marketing. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Still in the studios of Hit One Zero Three Point Nine and PR Four Chatterhouse says the new artist of the year this year, VGMA, which happens this weekend, is going to be performing on the Ghana Party in the Park in UK. The key thing here is that for new artist of the year from this year, the VGMA in partnership with Aquaba UK um, have a package for them. Anybody who wins a VGMA new artist of the year automatically qualifies to have a fully funded performance at the Aquaba UK's Ghana Party in the Park. Mm. Yeah, so once you win, automatically you're qualified to have that particular performance. Tickets, slot. visa, everything, everything is sorted. Everything sorted, yes. Hey. Beginning to end. So And then it comes with whatever. So what it means is that if there are media rounds and a few other things that are supposed to be done to support you, um, those things will be taken care of. But then the main focus is the fact that once you begin... A new artist, if you're able to break through, we are saying that we are providing you even a bigger platform for you to entrench or grow new markets in the UK. Um, yeah, well, the diaspora connect with them and have your perception on international music business, you know, sharpened. So go and experience it. But obviously, we are saying that. So once you win, the Aqua Aquaba uh, Party in the Park. Aquaba Party in the Park. At uh, in, Ghana Party in, in the Park. Ghana Party in the Park in Trent, UK. Trent, UK. Yes. news for yeah. new artist of the year and we're on the lookout for Come tomorrow. such an eventful week <laughs> yes right it's, it's, it's coming very, so tomorrow marks the beginning of the big weekend for okay. the music industry here in and who are you rooting for anyway <sighs> I'm, I'm rooting for the winners okay <laughs> anyway that's all we have for you here on join us prime my name is blessed so log on to myjoyonline.com we have updates for you there uh, that's not,